OSPF MD5 authentication. This is one of the different types of authentications supported by OSPF here. And this is also called type 2 and it uses MD5 cryptographic passwords. And I'm just going to talk about how we can configure it at the interface level and at the area level level. So let me just show you the configuration of OSPF OSPF on R1 OSPF. So we are just running OSPF. Let me just type it. This is the topology that I'm using, same topology that I, that I used for the uh, plain text authentication video. So as you can see, this is just a, uh, a, a basic OSPF configuration. So just basically uh, running, I mean, telling R1 to run OSPF on this inter interface and uh, same with R2, telling R2 to run interface, I mean to run OSPF on this interface as well. And we can see that show IP OSPF neighbor, we see that there's neighbor, uh, there is neighborship between uh, both routers. All right, so now we can, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and just configure MD5 authentication at the interface level, and this is actually how you configure it. So looking at the topology, the interface connecting to R2 is gig 00. So I'm going to just copy and paste that OSPF. I'm going to try to do this to, to type the command manually. OK. So that's how you enable MD5 authentication at the, on the interface level. <clears throat> and this here, the next command is how you specify the, the password. So you can see here that you can specify a key ID. In my case, I'm choosing one. I'm saying one. MD5 md5 and the password is cisco we see that uh, the we see that ospf just went down that's because of the md5 that we just uh, enabled on r1 we can verify that actually so ospf neighbor Oops, yeah, nothing here. OSPF, yeah. So, and we also saw the the uh, message here. No valid key, no valid valid authentication send key is available on. Ah, okay, I think you just have to, yeah, I think it's better to do this first because of that message. So I'm going to specify first the, the password or the key and then enable it. And if we go to check the interface on that, I mean the configs on that interface, we see that it's, it's here. All right, and I will do the same on R2. Just copy and paste here, this and that and that. Okay, now we see that OSPF uh, came up again because we now have the same uh, 
passwords on both routers. Now, if we if we do, you can verify that by doing this command OSPF neighbor. Yeah, it's correct. All right, so that's how you can enable MD5 at the interface level or on the interface, at the interface level. It should be on the interface level. All right, so next is uh, this is how you can enable it uh, for all uh, the interfaces in, in an area. So in this case, area zero. And this is how you configure it. So I'm going to do that. Oops. OSPF one area authentication. I think you should put area zero. Yeah, area zero. Authentication message digest. That's the command. I will just copy and paste that here. Oops, did not copy it. So I have to add zero. So that's for R1. Going to do the same on R2. Just copy and paste that command. And now we should see that neighborship should still up, should be still up. <clears throat> and I'm going to actually just remove the that command on that on the interface. So this one, I'm going to remove it. just to verify that it is still working after we enabled it uh, in the entire area. Okay, done, verify, config, okay. Okay, and now if we check OSPF neighborship it is still in fully state. <clears throat> All right, so let me do the same with the command, this command on R2. Okay, and if we check OSPF, there you go. Yeah, this is the command that we configured earlier. Same here. All right, let's verify. Okay, we did that already. How about this one? Now we see that cryptographic authentication enabled. Youngest key ID is one. And what else can we check here? Yeah, adjacent neighbor count is one. That uh, I was uh, looking for. And we can do the same command on R2. So cryptographic authentication enabled, adjacent uh, count is one. So that's how you can configure MD5 authentication at the interface level and at the area level or enable it for all the interfaces in the area. So yeah, that's all I wanna talk about in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.